I'm Indy Nidell and this is The Great War on the Road and today we are in France and we're going to look at some of the original locations and some of the battlefields, battlegrounds of the Meuse-Argonne offensive. And with me is Jean-Paul de Vries who's going to explain a little bit about what we're seeing. So it's great to have you here with us. Thank you very much. Um, we love your museum. They've probably seen, you know, the episode we shot there and stuff. So it's cool to have you back to show us around again. Now, right behind us, let's jump in. What are we looking at? Well, what we see here behind us, it looks like the ruins of the uh, church of Montfaucon. Okay. And Montfaucon was a very famous hill and the Germans understood very well that if you got all these high points, you got a point of view yeah. and it's you managing the war. But at the same moment, the Germans used these hills to put hidden uh, bunkers. Well, this looks like wrecked. It looks completely it's wrecked. It's a completely wrecked church, but if you look very carefully, you can see in the middle the square rectangled tower, yeah. which is not an original tower at all. You can see they use all different kinds of stones to rebuild it. Okay. And in the top of it, you can see the opening slot yeah. just for the machine gunners oh, all right. and the binoculars. So it's the point of view where the Crown Prince had his closest point to the front to see what was happening on the front. So the French would not bomb this because they'd already, already bombed it. They, they don't shell it for anymore. one and a half year and after that moment the Germans start building all different kinds of bunkers looking like ruins. This is one of them, but you've got 27 different around it. That look like ruins, but they're not actually ruins. You have machine guns and things. Machine yeah. guns and you have uh, walls of one meter thick. So the soldiers in there were pretty safe. Now, um, that's interesting about the heights commanding, because when we were talking earlier, you said that even back in the time of the Romans, they would have the heights, you know, that you could command. Heights were always important. Yeah. You, you know, you had a point of view, you can passing messengers, Germans knew it, Romans knew it. Yeah, and there was a lot of other history here too. We mentioned the Vikings as well when you were Vikings, talking. 19,000 Vikings in 1888 coming up the Meuse River, so they came from Scandinavia up the North Sea, going through the Meuse River until a village uh, 12 kilometers from here went off and tried to get this hill. And, and 19,000 Vikings were killed getting to this hill. 19,000 Vikings were killed. They didn't kill somebody. They were they killed. They were killed. Don't okay, who, who killed 19,000 Vikings? The French did. I think they all, all organized to get the Vikings. So they probably had like 19,001 Frenchmen. Oh, I think they got double as much. Okay. At least. Now, um, it's interesting here around, like you've got a lot of trees and a lot of growth that's definitely come after the war. Why don't they clear this out so you see more of the... Uh, well, you know? if you look at the small trees, the, the thinner trees, those are after war. Yeah. But if you look at these biggest, you yeah. can see they have very strange splittings. Yeah. And all these splittings have been shut off during the war. Okay. But uh, knowing that these date from the First World War, they are all filled with shrapnel, with bullet heads. Okay. So if you chop them, you, your chainsaw will break. And it's a very big risk. So people leave these trees. It's, it's so they're never going to touch them? They will never touch them. No, right. it's too risky. Even if you look at the others there, it's the same. They were shut off completely, but nature yeah, but came it back. Grew back in. But these, you may know for sure that the, the, the trunk will have no shrapnel. Okay, the, okay, I'm gonna this. And, now, and you said this was the, this, we, should we head towards the, this was uh, as far as uh, Crown Prince Ruprecht got. Not Ruprecht, the, eh? Ruprecht. Ruprecht is from Bavarian. Yeah, which this one? This is the Crown Prince of uh, Kaiser Wilhelm, his uh, own son. Okay, I thought, because I knew Ruprecht was up at Verdun. Ruprecht stuff, was so. where, uh, the Abri de Crown Prince, which is in Argonne Forest. Yeah. That's where Ruprecht was, and this was the, the Crown Prince who had his uh, head office in my village Romagne yeah. and Stinner. Okay. So he had, uh, in every village he took the best house, the biggest. Huh? Well, that makes sense. Yeah, that's logical. And this is the interior of the old church. Wow. Don't forget that this village, uh, Montfaucon, yeah. has been destroyed, I think it was eight times, completely destroyed in the last 20 centuries. Wow. Each time been leveled with the ground. And last time was 1418, and now they decided to build the village downwards. Yeah. Not up in the top anymore, because every war... It's, it's shot somebody's going to destroy it again. Away, shot away, yeah. So. If you look around, you see like different stones on top of what are obviously the original. Oh, you see stone. the steel beans getting oh, out, yeah. sticking That's out double, going that direction, the other direction. Okay. And here you got the entrance. I think there used to be a step. Oh huh? yeah, of course, so you can get up there. And, and up, upstairs you see the, the slot for the yeah. machine gunners or the binoculars. That's amazing. Clever. It's clever. You see one meter thick, eh? well protected. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Shame about the rest of the church, but, uh, but uh, okay. Okay, so where should we go next? Okay, can you tell us what we're looking at right now? Well, this is one of the bunkers uh, belonging to the Hindenburg line. They call it the Kremlin Stellung. Okay. Not fighting bunkers, uh, as you can see, it's more shelter. Yeah. But you've got 22 of these bunkers sitting behind lines. On the top of the hill, you're gonna have the Kremlin Stellung, the, the, the fighting line, and all these bunkers in the back of the hill. Now give us, uh, people are able to see which direction is which. Where would, where would the French be? Where would the Germans be here? Front will be on the west side. West over there. there. Okay. And that's the, the Argonne Forest, which is the front. Not the Verdun. Uh, Verdun is 40 kilometers back to us. That way. But the danger here came from the Argonne Forest. 
Uh, is there anything general about how these were constructed that, that, that you can tell us? Well, as you can see already, the, the quality of the concrete is still there. Uh, this is uh, almost 100 years old. It's still in good quality. Yeah. And as you can see, they still use the step way of building a bunker, not knowing that the bunker should be rounded to get uh, your sh uh, shells getting away. Now, we saw in some of the forts we shot in on the eastern front that a lot of them had been cannibalized during the Second World War, like a lot of materials have been taken away. Does that kind of stuff happen here on That's the western the same, front? That's the same. The Germans took along uh, all the iron they could from all the forts in Verdun, all the region here. They took all the iron away, yeah. being remelded, reused for the war. And you were saying something about sending it over to the Eastern Front, they, what they do with the railway, can you tell? Well, the railway, the Second World War, that's the, 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 it's part of the Maginot Line, they yeah. call it the strategic line, and the Germans took the whole railroad away to use it in Stalingrad again. They took the whole railway away to use in Stalingrad again. That's the, a... the only thing they left is the, the, all the concrete, the dikes, the, 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 the gutters, that's the, the perrons. All the iron, just all, all the All steel. the iron is gone, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. And here we go into the bunker. Okay, come on inside. Surprisingly good shape too. All right. Now you can see that the iron is gone. Huh? There used to be an iron plate with a slot for the machine gun, but they took everything off. Okay. That's been sawn off. You can see as well. And the, there's the machine gun in there that's not in there, but you can see that this is kind of suicide to come in. It's a strange thing that these burgers have no doors. The only door was in the middle, but the sides had no doors. No doors at all. No. Okay. And here you have a hole. Watch out. This hole had two purposes. Yeah. One is that it's the deepest point of the burger, so all the water. When oh, the drain here? system, but as well, if they threw a grenade through the uh, air system, yeah. it will fall into the hole. Normally, it's 80 centimeters deep, and ah. the grenade can only explode up, not to the sides, doing damage, okay. but going up. And you can see here, it's been exploded. You see how the concrete is going. Oh, yeah, of course. Wow. And all these German bunkers are all the, exactly the same. That's amazing that they, you know, it's like a little miniature golf course, you know. That it's being thought about. Yeah. It's, uh, here you can see there used to be another iron strip. Yeah. They used uh, for the ammunition stock stockage. Okay, okay. And then here you have two rooms for the men to sleep, to rest. Uh, oh, and you, you, you put out some, some things that people had left written on the walls here. Can you get, come up, Tony? Watch, the, watch for the watch wall. Watch out for the yeah. Here you can see yeah, that uh, during and after war, people wrote on it. Here you can see Kansas City, uh, Missouri, USA, October 30, 1918. We had a German soldier written here, Thomas Leifker München. Yeah. Watch out for the step, and then inside yep. you have two rooms. Okay. You still have the rest of the beds laying around. Now if you look here, these are the sides of the German bunk beds. And here you can see as well this one, where the nails are supposed to be the other part, I think. Here, here you can see. Yeah. It used to be there. And normally they should be laying around the chicken fence wire here. These were the mattresses. Okay, uh huh. Okay, now how many people would, would, would be here? How many people would be stationed here, living here? Uh, normally what I wrote about it is 12 persons uh, resting in these uh, shelter bunkers and 12 persons in shift in the, uh, where the houses were. Okay, so six here and six in that side. Or I think five, five and two on guard. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, yeah. Because there's always uh, guards outside. But if you look here, you have the bunk beds. Yeah. You have, uh, the hooks on the ceiling. Oh yeah. So I think at night the table went up and one more oh, bed was put in here. Wow, imagine that. You can see the humidity yeah, on the walls. It's and we're fairly lucky uh, shooting this week that it's, it's a few degrees above zero, but last week it was, what did you say, minus 12? Minus, minus 11, minus, minus 12. Minus 11, yeah. so we could have been there. I mean, imagine that. I mean, it gets cold here. For any of you fans of ours who are in warm climates, remember, a lot of these battles were happening in snow, ice, sleet. I mean, February, minus 15, minus 20 degrees. Stuff, that's pretty, uh, I, mean, that, I would not want to live here for a year <laughs> well, like don't that. forget, a lot of the soldiers didn't die because of the, the, the wounds of the bullets and no. uh, shrapnel. Yeah. They died because of lung problems, uh, you know, uh, trench feet, whatever, uh, yeah. uh, infections. It has nothing to do with the war, but... Uh, and as, as we've said, though, speaking of infections and medicine, and I'll say it again because it's a good fact, medicine progressed in the four years of, of the First World War, between 1914 and 1918, more than in any four-year period in history, either before or afterwards. That's what, you know, people say necessity is the mother of invention. War is actually the mother War of invention. War is the best moment to invent. That's when, you know, if you, if, yeah. All right, so shall we move on? Yeah, okay, cool. Now, behind us, uh, you can see if you get a, it goes way, way down. You had to come up to take this point. This is a terrible point. Normally, the, the only reason the Americans could take this hill was because they had enough men. Had Germans were maybe five, six hundred left over to defend this hill for 
three days. Three it took days. the American one, one division, the 32nd division, took them three days to get this hill. It's suicide, look at it. Yeah, it is suicide. That. And especially that uh, the officers ordered their men to stand up in line, attack this hill. Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't adopt the new, the, like, the, the, the tactics that the British and French had learned from experience. No, many and of the officers, they fought the Mexican war and they still were in the old fashioned way of fighting. So they ordered their men, stand up in line, got your 30 kilos on your backpack, uh, a gas mask on your mouth, and then attack this hill uh, through the barbed wire. Uh, you see the, the steepness of this hill, it's almost impossible. Yeah, it's especially carrying 30 kilos of gear. It's the, the, the time they had and the enough men they had. That's yeah. the reason they took it. Time and men. It took them three days, and the, this is what, what they say, it's the turning point of war. When yeah. this hill fell, uh, they, they called it the Crime Hiller Line, the, the uh, Côte d'Amarie. Yeah. Uh, both sides knew it was going to be over. That's it, yeah. Once, One well, of the if you can points. If, especially if you can take this, then you can take anything. You can take anything. Yeah. But I uh, don't know about the casualties, but uh, uh, the main reason the cemetery is in Romagna is that they lost most of their men in Romagna. Okay. So why transporting them to another place, leave them where they fell? Bury fell. them here. Yeah. Okay. Hey, this hill is very famous because in 1914 it was taken by Erwin Rommel, okay. who in those days was an under lieutenant. Yeah, we did a special about Rommel in the, in the, in the first one. Yeah, the desert, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in uh, 1918 it was taken again by Truman and MacArthur, who one later became big general and the other one became president. Wow, okay. So, huh. That's pretty impressive. No, we are here. Huh? Now we're here. Now it's us. Now it's us. Now we're taking it. Here you can see very carefully that on the left hand side you got an old wall, the original wall of the village. Yeah. They continue to the here, yeah. looking like the ruins, but in fact it's the entrance of their bunker. Okay, cool. All steel plates on the roof. Wow. That's uh and how many how many people would be in here? I don't know. That's uh, nothing has been written about it. This each day it has been destroyed. Each day the French shot it for, for three and a half All years. Alright, so okay. And don't forget at the end of the war, the Germans were maybe at half of their strength yeah. of what they said they had. I see one of the entrances, which I okay. don't understand, is on the fire side. Oh, okay, of course. Yeah, this is the fire. Okay, this is the fire side, but there's an entrance. Incoming shells anyway. will always hit inside a bunker. And this is one of the machine gun posts. And there yeah. was another one, but it collapsed. There was another slot over there yeah. to have. You know, the, the position yeah, sure. for the machine gunners. And this, you can see as well, was a little bit diagonal for a machine gun. And all these square stones are all the old stones of the village, yeah? Okay, just, just pulled up, right. Pull, and if you look at the concrete, you can see here how wow. easy it goes off. Each night, they had a few hours to make cement, concrete, quick build it, but it's not a good quality. Okay. All right, main entrance. Okay, we saw what you're seeing straight ahead. We saw that from outside. That's one machine gun post. But they could fire this way as well. It's pretty tricky defense. I wouldn't like to come up against this, you know, just come running against this, you know. But man, what a miserable day to, to imagine sitting in this weather, waiting hour after hour with your weapons. And don't forget that uh, the Germans the Americans were up against were uh, guys who fought for four years. Eh? Well experienced, oh, elite yeah. troops, many times had uh, Württembergers, Bavarians, whatever. They fought for four years and the Americans coming at two weeks training, four weeks training, that's it. Just marched straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Died like crazy. Died like crazy, lined up. It's amazing. Oh, war is hell. Okay, Mont Falcon has been here, or now it's moved, but it was here for a couple of thousand years, right? And 1914 comes, and what happens to the village? What happens to Mont Falcon? Well, for, for the tenth time, the whole village got destroyed again. That's uh, why people decided to uh, why stay on this hill, better start building downstairs because the most important thing in wars are those points of view and each time they will be destroyed. So, so it, was never, it was never destroyed because they were bad people here. It was never destroyed because they caused a plague. It was no, 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 it had nothing to do with the people. It's just the point where you, it you are living. destroyed ten times. Ten times just a because hill. it's a hill. It's yeah. a hill. That's what happens to hills. It's nice that they moved it finally. 
Funny, but it took them 2,000 years to understand. Once again, that was a look at some of the defensive works and some of the defensive points and some of the defensive tactics of the Meuse-Argonne offensive, which we will cover in depth in our regular episodes when we get there, so you don't need to write to us about it. Uh, again, thank you very much, Jean-Paul de Vries, for taking us around and showing us all this. And if you come here, come to Romagna, to the Romagna 1418 Museum, which is not only a fascinating museum, but he can show you around this area as well, because that is what he does. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.